How old are you? You look so young. 36. 36? Yeah, so maybe you will be uh, next to Macron. <laughs> <laughs> and, all right. So the first question is very curious. Okay. What triggered you to start to learn about universal basic income? You know, this is actually um, something that we've been thinking about, that I've been thinking about for a lot longer than um, I've been working on it. Because here in Hawaii, like many other places, our economy has been changing so rapidly for many years. We have a lot of homelessness, we have a lot of jobs that um, are being automated, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people who just can't afford to make ends meet. I graduated from high school with um, a class of 219, and I think there are less than half of us that can still afford to live here in Hawaii. So it started as a question in my mind about what can we do so that our kids will be able to grow up here and afford to be able to live and pursue um, their passions uh, in an economy that is going to be radically different than the one that we grew up in. Mm -hmm. And that's something that got me thinking about this long-term question of how do we change our economy so that it benefits everybody um, over the long term. And um, of all things, uh, a couple of years ago, I was on Reddit. It's a online um, discussion group, and there's a, a subgroup there that talks about um, the concept of universal basic income. And that's, I think, the first place where I actually heard the term described that way. And that's where um, uh, I started putting these pieces together to come up with the resolution that ultimately we just passed this year to start an official conversation here in the state of Hawaii about what we're going to do going forward to address these really critical issues. Wow. Okay. So, um, what's going to change in Hawaii after you pass this uh, the bill? You know, um, on the face of it, nothing changes immediately. But I think what does change is the discussion that the public is currently having and the values that I think um, we have taken for granted. You know, the whole idea behind this is to um, put everything back on the table and go back to score one and define what those values and priorities are that are important to our state, our economy, our families that live here mm -hmm. and the future that we want to see. And that means looking outside the existing um, government social safety net and outside the existing uh, political infrastructure and considering things which might seem radical at first glance but ultimately which can provide for everybody and ensure that as the economy evolves everyone benefits and no one is left behind. Uh, oh, to yeah. What foreign, kind of role? Uh, UBI to Hawaiian people. Do you decide it? And the uh, USA government to agree with it? And the uh, USA government pay for UBI or something? You know, when it comes to financing uh, potential basic income or some similar mechanism, I think what we're starting to see is that taking action and implementing something could ultimately be cheaper for taxpayers and cheaper for everybody than letting automation and innovation um, unemploy large segments of the population. Because already government um, is having a hard time affording welfare and housing assistance and um, all the other social programs that uh, keep people above poverty and that's something that is unsustainable given the direction our economy is going so it is the fiscally responsible thing to do to start to talk about um, these mechanisms because ultimately they are the financially smart way to go um, almost any way that you look at it and when it comes to um, Hawaii itself I mean we have about 1.4 million people here in the state um, we are obviously one of the smaller states, but uh, if it's possible here, then it can be done anywhere. And while the federal government um, uh, hasn't been the most uh, progressive in starting to look at different options for the future, we can still act without the federal government. You know, we have an obligation to our own residents here in the state, and we move um, whether the federal government uh, is there or not, because we look out for our people, and that's something that's important to us. Oh, yeah. What kind of role are you playing in the whole, the whole thing and uh, behind the universal basic income movement? 
I think here uh, in the legislature, um, I wrote this resolution to start that conversation at the government level where we have the capacity to make change and set up a system that could one day hopefully provide for everyone and ensure that um, jobs uh, as they disappear um, can be replaced by some sort of security so that people can grow up here and have their basic needs met so that they can find work and get involved in things that they're passionate about and find work that is meaningful to them and not just to earn a paycheck in order to make a living. Yeah, uh, as far as we can see, uh, we just are visiting the Waikiki Beach, you know. That's kind of service industry uh, based economy, you know, and then tourism bring uh, sales. So I, well, so far I don't see a lot of automation in that particular resort area. But I was wondering what other part of Hawaii, the all the, what come down to the automation? Because it do, does it really have a factory uh, or anything else we, we, want to, we want to explore. So could you uh, share with us um, what you see? Sure, you know, nationally here in the United States, we know that about 45% of the work being done in our economy today um, can be automated using existing technology. And we have um, analysis that shows that we can expect uh, about 47% of our jobs to be automated in the next 20 years. And here in Hawaii, I think we are more exposed than the rest of the nation to that sort of change because we are a service-based economy. We don't have a lot of um, uh, different pillars in our economy. It's mostly um, retail sales and hospitality and mm -hmm. transportation, and all the things that really are subject to um, innovation. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that change now. I mean, you walk into a supermarket and uh, you know, there, where there used to be 10 clerks checking people out, there are now only two or three in some yeah. cases. Mm -hmm. So we know that change is coming. Um, we really, I think, as part of this effort uh, here at the state level, we mm -hmm. want to identify to what extent our state is and our economy is exposed to that change. And that will, I think, provide a catalyst to ensure that we then take the next step to consider, all right, what do we do next? And what is the mechanism going to look like to ensure that our economy remains stable, that everybody has opportunity, and that no one ultimately is uh, left behind by it? Yeah, uh, uh, I would like to know more about, uh, we know you reach out different departments at the state level. So could you uh, share with us how this working group, all culture, all, all together, work harmony, are they working? Harmony? Uh, well, it hasn't convened yet. It's about to. Uh, but the idea is that we bring everyone to the table. Mm -hmm. We have um, the working group co-chaired by the Department of Labor, mm -hmm. as well as the Department of uh, Business and Economic Development. Mm -hmm. And that's both sides of the economic equation. Mm -hmm. But it's open to all stakeholders. So we want people who have an interest uh, to come in, who have experience and expertise in this field, and in talking about these issues, mm -hmm. to be a part of that because we don't know exactly what mechanism um, will best fit Hawaii and make sense for our economy here. That's what we need to find out. And that's why we're starting to have that conversation and do that analysis now to figure out what the numbers look like so that we can create a system that fits.